Hey guys, welcome back to Bear Mountain Builds. Now, a lot of you guys who watch my channel are beginners to woodworking and have been asking what tools do I recommend to just get started? Well, today, I'm gonna tell you. All right, today we are talking beginner tools to get you started woodworking and building your skills. Now, for this video, I'm going to be talking about the type of tool and why you need it. I'm not going to be getting into the nitty gritty specs or brands of stuff, but I will have linked down below in the description tools that I recommend and maybe even the budget version. However, I promise with these tools and a little bit of practice, you'll be able to build things like a workbench, a planter box, and even a dining room table. Now, let's get started. For every woodworking project, you need to be able to measure. So the very first tool you need to start woodworking is the tape measure. This might seem a little obvious, but a good quality tape measure goes a long way because you're gonna be using this on every single project, so I highly recommend you get something good right off the bat. Here's some qualities I look for in a good tape measure. First, 20 to 25 feet long. This will be more than enough for whatever you need to do and not so bulky that you're gonna get sick of carrying it around a 10 pound weight. You want a wide tape, so it's very easy to read everything. Along with that, I really like numerical fractions along the hash marks on one side. That makes it just much easier and you don't have to spend your time counting these individual little lines. Finally, you want it to be nice and sturdy because when you're extending it out, you don't want it to be all floppy and it's really pain to fight that. So you want to be able to just extend it out and a good test is it should be able to support its own weight at up to 10 feet long. So we're at 10 feet right here, holds its own weight. You go a little bit past it, it'll break. So the first tool you need is a good quality tape measure. And now that we have the ability to measure something, we need to be able to cut. So the very first saw you should buy as a beginner woodworker is the circular saw. This is the most versatile saw you have in the entire shop. This saw is portable and powerful. I use it for a ton of stuff. You can adjust the depth of cut and change the blade angle. You can be using it just to cut stuff in your shop. You can take it outside and start fixing fences with it. You can take it inside, working on home projects and be cutting all the way above your head. Wait, actually, don't do that. And you can just take it and chuck it in your back of your truck and drive over to your buddy's place. It's so versatile. It's really small, so it's easy to bring with you. There's nothing quite as universal as this saw. So with a circular saw and a little bit of practice, you can be making some pretty doggone good cuts that are straight. But if you wanna take it to the next level and you wanna be able to make a cut that's comparable to a miter saw, that's where it takes us to our next item, which is the speed square. The speed square is a super useful tool throughout your entire woodworking career. It's got a lot of markings on here that are helpful for many different reasons, but right now we don't care about any of those. What we care about is that this is a 45 degree triangle. It has a flange on it that we can hook over a piece of wood. And now we have a line that is gonna be our saw guide and it's perfectly perpendicular to our edge and you cut it like that. But say you want a 45 degree angle. Well, it has that too. You can just do the same thing, put it on the lip, and you can cut a perfect 45 degree angle. And thus you have the poor man's miter saw. Now your speed square is great for your longer, skinnier boards like your two by four, two by sixes, two by eights. But what about plywood? Because I see guys with these big 4x8 sheets of plywood and they run them through their table saws and I have no idea how they're able to get a good cut like that because I've done it and I am horrible at it, which is why I always do my circular saw. But I use it in conjunction with my 105 inch Bora saw guide. Now what's really great about this saw guide is it has built in clamps on the underside. So this is all adjustable and you can adjust the size. And then I have a lever over here that allows me to just clamp it down. And I can use this to cut my four by eight sheets of plywood down to much more manageable sizes. So that way I can take it and run it through my table saw or I can just stick with it. And I can just use this over and over again until I get to the size that I want. The circular saw combined with this saw guide is vastly cheaper than buying a full-on table saw. So if you're looking to just try to get in the game, this is what you should do. Now let's talk about cords versus batteries. As you can tell, this circular saw I've been holding up is battery powered because there's no cord. Now this saw is the first circular saw I ever bought. And as you can tell, it does have a cord. There's a reason why I moved from cord 
to knot cord. When I'm cutting with my circular saw and I'm moving along, I'm going well, and then all of a sudden, boom, my cord's stuck. I have to stop cutting, I have to yank my cord out of the way, everything goes to heck in a handbasket, and then I have to restart. When I'm doing woodworking, I want to enjoy the process. When I'm cutting with something corded, I don't enjoy the process. This does not spark joy in me. This plus this, major joy. <laughs> so we have the ability to measure, we have the ability to cut, now we need to be able to fasten everything back together so the next tool you need is the drill. So a drill has an adjustable chuck on the end like this, that way you can put a drill bit in or you can put in a screwdriver bit to drive screws in. There's not a lot to say here, drills are relatively self-explanatory, but just buy something that's within your budget. And for most cordless drills, they usually come in a pack with an impact driver like this. But if it's outside the budget, just wait until next Christmas. All right, so let's talk about battery systems real quick. Choosing a battery system is a lot like getting married. You wanna meet your in-laws before you're committed. So what you wanna do is you wanna do your own research on the brand you are gonna choose. I do DeWalt, I've been doing it for many years. I honestly think you can't go wrong with it. There's plenty of power here and they have plenty of tools out there, but do your own research. If you want to do something that's a little bit more budget friendly like Ryobi, I think it's a great platform. They're 18 volts, so they're a little less power, but for the bang for the buck, it's well worth it and they have a ton of tools out there. Now, personally, if you're really gonna to try to dive into woodworking, I recommend something a little bit beefier like DeWalt, Milwaukee, Craftsman, Cobalt. I think they're all good picks, but do your own research. So. There you go. All right, so now you're able to put a project together, but you're gonna quickly realize that you're running out of hands fast, which brings us to the unsung hero of the woodworking world, and that is the clamp. Now, there are literally thousands of clamps out there, but just to get you started, I recommend the trigger clamp. And it works like this. You can just adjust it to the size, and then you clamp it down to whatever you're clamping. They're super simple to use and they're really versatile. You can use these to clamp your project to your table, you can use them to clamp a saw guide in place, and you can use them to just clamp your project together while it glues. But above all else, these are really inexpensive. You wanna pick up these because you can get a lot of them for a relatively low cost. I recommend you get yourself a couple six inch clamps, a couple 12 inch clamps, and a couple 24 inch clamps. Now, I guarantee, Years from now, during your woodworking career, you're gonna own hundreds of clamps, but these will just get you started. Now we're able to measure, cut, and put a project all together. Next, we need to be able to sand. So the next tool you need is a sander. Now, this was my first sander. It was a quarter sheet of sandpaper and a piece of two by four block. This is exactly why they invented power tools. So if it's in your budget, I highly recommend you get yourself a powered sander. There are two types of sanders. You can either get a palm sander or an orbital sander. And honestly, they both have really great functions for different things. Your palm sander is good for smaller projects, getting into nooks and crannies, and the sandpaper is really cheap. Now your orbital sander is really great for big surfaces like walls or plywood, and it's really good at dust control. Both these sanders are great. I would choose the palm sander first, but I'll leave the decision up to you. Now, you have all the tools to put a project together, but what do you work on? Right now, I have a big assembly table that I can work on, but this is definitely not where I started. I started with sawhorses. I had two sawhorses and a piece of plywood laid across them, and that was my workbench for honestly several years because I didn't have the room for a permanent workbench, so I had to lay these things out, put a piece of plywood on, and when I was done, I leaned it all up against the wall. That was my shop at that point. I do recommend that you pick up four saw horses instead of just two, because that lets you cut a whole sheet of plywood right down the middle and you don't have to have things falling all over the place because both sides will be supported by two saw horses. Honestly, this is one of the best buys you can get when you're just starting out. Your knees and back will thank you. So with just these tools, a beginner woodworker can handle most woodworking projects, whether it be a workbench, a table, or even a nice cedar planter box for their patio. Now. For those of you guys that wanna get more into woodworking and you have the budget to do so, I have a few more tools to recommend to you. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video at all, please hit the like button, it helps me out a ton. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my future projects. Now, let's talk about table saws.
Now for all those tools I've listed before, they're a really great place to start woodworking and you can really build your skills. But there's one downside with that and that's making repetitive cuts. So say you wanted to have a board that's gonna be a foot long every single time, you're gonna to have to measure that every single time and make that cut, which can get a little tedious. But that's where the table saw comes into play. Now there are two great things about the table saw. One is it has a rip fence that you can move side to side and then you can lock into place and now you have a set distance from your saw blade to your rip fence. So that way, your boards that you send through here are always gonna be the same length every single time. Now additionally, what's really great about the table saw is miter slots. Now these miter slots work with what's called a table saw sled, and that's really great for joinery. So you can have a miter sled on here that will basically replace your miter saw up here, or you can do some really cool stuff like box joints on there, and it just is really good at repetitive cuts every single time. So if you got the budget, I recommend you pick yourself up a job site table saw like this with an eight and a quarter inch blade and miter slots. With this, you'll have plenty of power to do pretty much everything you ever want to. It will max out your cuts at about 25 inches, but if you wanna cut anything bigger than that, you can just use your circular saw and saw guide. However, the one downside to these job site table saws is they have a pretty small overall working area, but that's super easy to fix. You just build yourself an outfeed table, which is exactly what I did for my old table saw, which I have a video on, and I'm gonna be doing again on this table saw. Now, the last tool we're gonna to talk about is the miter saw. The miter saw is a distant second to the table saw. I'm honestly even hesitant to put this in this video, but I really do use this saw all the time in my builds because I use two by fours in a lot of my stuff, and all of my builds are geared towards beginners, so I do think this is a good saw to have for beginners. Now what's really great about this is it can make repetitive cuts at the same length for longer boards like 2x4s over and over and it's really easy to use. My one caveat to the miter saw is you should not buy this unless you intend on building yourself a miter saw table. Now what a miter saw table is, it has bench stops built into it. Now a bench stop is just a movable stop that once you put your board in and determine how long you want it to be after it's cut, now once it's in its spot, you take your bench stop, flush it up against your board, and tighten it down. Then you can make your cut with your miter saw. You now have your cut board, you take off, and then you can put a new board in, and you push it all the way up against your bench stop, and you can make a cut again, and it'll be exactly the same length as the previous board, and you can do this over and over and over again for as many boards as you need. There are a lot of miter saws out there but really I would just focus on getting something that has a 10 inch blade because it will allow you to cut four by fours along with just buying something that's name brand. You don't need to get the top of the line model that they offer, but get something that's the middle of the pack and it will treat you just fine. And there you go. Those are all the tools I recommend for a beginner to get into woodworking. Now these are a great place to start building your skills. It's exactly where I started. Now this is the first video where I'm working my mouth more than I'm working with my hands. So let me know what you think of it. And as always, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my future videos. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button for me. I really appreciate it when you do that and it helps me out a ton. And leave a comment if you have any questions. Also, if you subscribe, let me know where you're from. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. You're gonna need a lot of glue.